Hey gamers, this is John, host of Video Games in the World. Next month, two games I have been waiting for since forever are arriving, and they are Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'm planning to buy both games, but next episode I will tell you the history of the Kingdom Hearts series of video games. This episode touches on Resident Evil, but rather than the history of the series, we shall dive into the history of the antagonistic faction of the series, Umbrella Inc. My greatest inspiration for this episode is the Templin Institute. I love how she tells stories of different fictional factions, organizations, and governments from different movies, comic books, TV shows, and video games. Let us begin with a story of Umbrella. Enjoy. This contains some spoilers for Resident Evil series. You've been warned. The Umbrella Corporation was an international pharmaceutical enterprise with subsidiaries active in a variety of industries from the 1970s to the early 2000s. Umbrella had influence in pharmaceutical, chemical, and consumer cosmetics production and selling industrial machine production, consumer products, health foods, the transport industry, and tourism. Umbrella's large array of subsidiaries was typical for large-scale corporations, though it was purpose-built to cover up illegal activities. The Umbrella Corporation was founded in 1968 by British aristocrats Oswald E. Spencer and Edward Ashford, along with brilliant researcher Dr. James Marcus, who were university classmates. It was founded as a pharmaceutical enterprise, but it was also used as a front for the creation of bioorganic weapons, also known as BOWs, for development. The three men, along with associates and protégés, were all virologists associated with the eugenics movement. Umbrella's immediately, immediate prehistory truly begins in 1966 when Dr. Marcus developed a hypothesis that a mythical West African flower known as Stairway of the Sun bestowed powers to its consumers by a mutagenic viral infection. In a trip to the Indapaya tribal lands, the fabled flower was discovered in an underground garden and a virus discovered within it. However, flowers cultivated in the United States failed to replicate the virus. Requiring significant funding beyond their aristocratic links to bring about their eugenic dream, Spencer formed Umbrella Pharmaceuticals on behalf of Ashford and an indifferent Marcus and established a base in the Indapaya Garden so progenitor samples could be transported over the Atlantic instead. Requiring more money, the three agreed to a plan later known as the Tyrant Virus Project, where they would independently develop strains of progenitor to sell to the U.S. military as a weapon. The T-Virus would be a virus that could bring the world to the brink of destruction, and in the middle of the project, Edward Ashford died, although his death was believed to be masterminded by the power-hungry Spencer. The death of Edward Ashford was the beginning of the downfall of the once proud Ashford family, since his only son, Alexander, was not a virologist but, but a geneticist. To save his family's once great reputation, he created twin clones using the genes of the Ashford family matriarch, Veronica. These children were Alfred and Alexia Ashford. Years later, the twins would realize the truth about their birth and would grow to hate their father. Alexia went on to become head researcher after graduating from a university at the mere age of 10. She would later create the T. Veronica virus in which the first tech subject was her father, Alexander, who turned into a monster called Nosferatu. She would later experiment the virus in her body and would take 15 years for her to bond with it, so she put herself to sleep in cryostasis. By the end of the 1970s, the T. Virus project was expanded considerably by a protege of Dr. Marcus, William Birkin. Birkin would later create an even more powerful virus called the G-Virus. As the years passed, Umbrella built various headquarters in Europe and Asia, continuing to be a front for the engineering of bioweapons for military purposes. In 1988, Dr. James Marcus was experimenting with leeches, but Umbrella's paramilitary security forces bursted into his lab and assassinated him. And in his last moments, he saw that his two protégés, Albert Wesker and William Birkin, betrayed him. During that time, Spencer was growing mad with power and even more paranoid. The death of Dr. James Marcus was the start of Umbrella's downfall. Years went by, and after the collapse of the Soviet Union, 
Umbrella began to expand its paramilitary organizations. These paramilitary units were the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service and the Umbrella Security Service, and many of its members were retired soldiers, communist guerrillas, nationalist terrorists, and mercenaries with impressive military backgrounds. Raccoon City was an American Midwestern town that was controlled by Umbrella. Anyone who lived in the city was employed by the company and because of that, no one dared to oppose them. And that lack of strength would cost them dearly. Around July of 1998, there was a series of grisly, intensely cannibalistic murders occurring in the Arkley Mountains. In the Arkley Mountains, there were reports of hitchhikers and families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were eaten. To calm the masses, the Raccoon City Police Department dispatched a special force team called STARS to investigate. The team was comprised of men and women with military backgrounds and their leader was none other than Albert Wesker. When a train carrying Umbrella interns into the training facility in the Arkley Mountains is attacked by a swarm of leeches, STARS Bravo team led by Enrico Marini is sent to investigate. Their chopper suffers an engine failure and the team goes on foot. The rookie and youngest member of the team, Rebecca Chambers, enters a train and encounters Billy Cohen, a military convict. Rebecca is forced to team up with Billy on the train after encountering zombies and monsters. One by one, her fellow STARS members were being killed. Upon the train's arrival to the Umbrella Training Facility, Billy and Rebecca encounter various monsters and zombies including a humanoid leech resembling the late Dr. Marcus. The two then encounter the real Dr. Marcus who becomes Queen Leech and the duo manage to eliminate them. While Albert Wesker found himself under attack by Sergei Vladimir, a high-ranking official of Umbrella's Russian division. 24 hours later, Alpha Team was sent to rescue the Bravo Team, but what they found was the chopper's derelict remains and what was left of its pilot. The team were attacked by a pack of ravenous zombie dogs and one of their teammates was killed. At that time, the surviving stars Alpha were Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, and Albert Wesker. The sole survivors of Bravo were Chambers and Marini. Stars Alpha en entered the mansion, but they realized it was not safe either. The T-Virus had contaminated the premises creating zombies and monsters. Later, they would realize that the mansion belongs to Umbrella Inc. The team uncovered various secrets, including the horrific experiments performed on human test subjects, such as Lisa Trevor. In the underground lab, Wesker introduced the team to the Tyrant. Wesker, having formed Raccoon City's Elite Stars Unit two years prior, would develop a plan to lure the team to the mansion and obtain battle data from the conflict that would surely follow. Although the tyrant was deployed, leading Wesker to falsify his death as a realistic unforeseen side effect of releasing it. Both the laboratory and the Rapid Jeep tyrant were destroyed by stars. Alpha Team before making their escape back to Raccoon City with a single Bravo Team survivor. After the destruction of the mansion, Chris, Jill, Barry, and Rebecca tried to reveal the truth, but unfortunately no one believed them since most of the evidence was destroyed in the mansion. Also, the police chief, Brian Irons, was taking bribes from the company to keep quiet about the incident. Two months later, Wesker went underground and joined forces with a spy called Ada Wong. He used the beautiful spy to carry out his objectives, including recovery of the G-Virus developed by Birkin. William Birkin had plans to sell his virus to an opposing corporation, what he failed to realize was that Umbrella did not play games. So Spencer dispatched a team led by Hunk to assassinate the researcher and return with the G-Virus. But Birkin hit a sample on time before he was mortally wounded and became his own creation. As a monster, he hunted down all the Hunk soldiers and killed them all, except for one. And so, the virus carried by rats was spread throughout Raccoon City, thus sending the peaceful little town to its unavoidable fate on September 24th of 1998. The morning after, the U.S. government had the city limits boarded off by the military whilst they began an investigation into the matter. 
Jill Valentine was attempting to escape the city while being pursued by a new type of bow called Nemesis. Its purpose was to hunt down All-Stars members since they had become a threat to Umbrella's plans. Meanwhile, the Umbrella Security Service was in Raccoon City on a mission to destroy all evidence that can implicate Umbrella's involvement in the incident and eliminate any survivor. Jill would join forces with a member of the UBCS, Carlos Oliveira. Not only they would fight the creature, but also a treacherous UBCS member called Nikolai Zinovayev. Other well-known survivors of the incident were rookie police officer Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield, who was in town looking for her brother, Chris Redfield. During Leon and Claire's journey, they would encounter Sherry Birkin, daughter of William and Annette Birkin. Leon would also encounter Ada, who was in search of the G-Virus. Many survivors were tragically killed in the incident, but Leon, Claire, Sherry, Ada, Jill, Carlos, and Barry managed to escape. Not taking any chances, the President of the United States ordered an operation to sterilize Raccoon City. On the morning of October 1st, 1998, a missile was launched directly into the city. The city was destroyed and the death toll surpassed the 100,000 mark. The destruction of Raccoon City will be the final nail in the coffin for Umbrella. Umbrella's fortunes failed to improve in the time shortly after the Raccoon City incident. The U.S. government changed its opinions of the company. While it had initially desired to obtain Umbrella's secrets for its own military projects, it was now in full condemnation over Umbrella's failure to contain the situation. A suspension of business decree was imposed on Umbrella USA, Inc., preventing any further presence in the U.S. stock market. Under threat of financial ruin, Umbrella filed an appeal to overturn the decision. And they succeeded as they still had some influence over the world. On Sheena Island, an undercover investigator, Ark Thompson, operating on behalf of Leon S. Kennedy, succeeded in destroying Umbrella's tyrant production plan after Vincent Goldman, the Umbrella director of the island, unleashed a T-virus on his citizens. Shortly afterwards, Claire Redfield broke into Umbrella's Paris facilities in search of her brother and was captured and sent to Umbrella's illegal prison camp on Rockford Island. While there, she witnessed Albert Wesker attack the island in search of the T. Veronica virus. Escaping the island, she found herself trapped in the Antarctic base, where Edward Ashford's granddaughter, Alexia Ashford, awoke from a self-induced coma with a desire to establish a new order. But she was finally put to rest by Chris and Claire. In 2002, Leon and Jack Krauser were sent on a mission to apprehend Javier Hidalgo, leader of a Hispanic drug cartel called the Sacred Snakes. However, Hidalgo managed to use the T. Veronica virus and mutated, but was dispatched of by Leon and Krauser. In 2003, Chris and Jill led an anti-biohazard paramilitary force on an operation to infiltrate a Russian facility's underground chamber, where they fought Umbrella's final weapon, Talos, after it was dispatched by Sergei Vladimir. At the same time, Wesker managed to infiltrate the facility and a few hours prior to Chris and Jill's arrival and had one final encounter with Sergei, who then mutated into a new virus-infected monster. While Chris and Jill destroyed Talos, Wesker managed to extract all data from Umbrella's Red Queen supercomputer, while also erasing any of the memory left within the computer itself in order to use it against Spencer, thus bringing Umbrella to its knees. Umbrella was finally found guilty soon after the Umbrella Russia incident, after anonymous notification by Albert Wesker using the data he had extracted. The U.S. government has suspended Umbrella's market trading license pending further investigation into their business practices. While this investigation must have already provided Umbrella with severe financial problems, a worldwide manhunt was survived for surviving founder Oswald E. Spencer sealed the organization's fate. With its trading completely suspended, Umbrella's shares quickly collapsed and the company was left bankrupt. With the corporation shut down, a vast amount of biological weapon and virus samples appeared on the black market, birthing an age of bioterrorism. The ultimate irony came to be that the world was safer with Umbrella than without it. But still, there were other companies trying to follow in Umbrella's footsteps such as Will Pharma and Tricell. And that's pretty much it for the history of Umbrella, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta say that Umbrella is one of my most favorite antagonistic organizations in fiction. 
Not to mention that Resident Evil is one of my most favorite video game franchises of all time. The game scared me as a child, but I loved the jump scares of the old games, the stories that were told, and so on. Of course, some Resident Evil games were a major piece of crap, no doubt about it. The movies had a different take on Umbrella, although in some ways they respected some of the stories. First two, good were, first two were good in my opinion, but the rest I didn't like. Before closing, I want to thank the Templin Institute for inspiring me to do this. I know that in the future they might make the history of Umbrella, and it will be potentially better than my own, I must admit. <laughs> Until next time, gamers. This is John, host of Video Games in the World. Have a happy holiday season and a happy 2019. Bye.